Uh, we know now when the War Within is launching and the War Within is getting rolling. We know all the storylines are starting to be laid out here. But what about the final expansion in the World Soul Saga? The Last Titan. Belialar is saying Azeroth is not the Last Titan and that is clear. I kind of agree with that. I don't think she is. But let's see what his evidence is for this little explanation here. Welcome back. Today it's going to be pretty fun. My mission is to take one topic, one that you absolutely need to know and understand for the next few World of Warcraft expansions and explain it to you. That topic is Azeroth. Now we know that Azeroth is a world soul. That's very clear. So yeah. clear that Blizzard yep. are hanging three entire expansions off it. But is she a titan? That's the big question. We were told at once yes, but honestly, the way this whole saga is shaping up, it just doesn't make sense anymore. There are <laughs> we were told that at one point, but I think Blizzard's kind of changed their tune. I mean, remember, Blizzard's kind of written their lore as they go here. And Titans are really just, are, they're part of Arcane, right? They come from Arcane, they're made of Arcane. I think World Souls are a completely different thing now. That's the way they're being explained. So Azeroth being the last Titan, probably not. Could it be Sargeras? That would kind of be cool. Maybe a little redemption arc. Who knows? He, I don't know if he can be redeemed, uh, but he could be the last Titan standing. That could be what that means. Or someone else. Something else arises that is the last Titan. Too many hints. Not only that, but we have spent the last three expansions cosmic unpicking dragon, the What's idea up, eh? that Azeroth is a Titan world soul. Emphasis on the Titan. So how did that happen? How did we get there? Today, I'm going to hit that beat by beat so that you know exactly what is going on as we move into these expansions and where it might take Warcraft. All thanks to the bunch who are stepping up when Google doesn't today's sponsor. Oh, there it Hello is. Fresh. Now, here's the deal. I've been a customer of theirs since 2019, personally. Hello Fresh sponsor. I eat better, yeah, it could be Ammon Thule. The last Titan could be hinting at maybe he's the last one standing and we kill him in that expansion. It could be. That's not That's not a bad one, Kinjul. Sounds pretty crazy. If you hit up HelloFresh.com, and you use code Bellular Apps, you will get a free appetizer per box while your subscription is active, just for the whole duration. Now, your box will contain meals you have selected from the weekly menu of over 40 Cosmic options. Dragon. For me, That's an interesting I option as well. Like this delicious uh, chipotle core and black bean soup, which was lovely. The quick meals are often one pot or one pan, which is great. I'm usually able to do a lot. Maybe of she's a HelloFresh well. subscriber. Maybe Azeroth's a HelloFresh subscriber. And she used code Bellular Gaming. It's Who knows? Than ordering food Could be that too. Simplifies my life. I save time shopping for groceries, and that cuts out some cognitive load, and it helps me stay on top of things. I value that amazingly. Cognitive load. I'm on load. top of things. I'm able to make more videos for you. And then there's another really big thing. I just have a far more varied diet, which. You know, micronutrients and all the different things. It's it's good to eat a varied diet. That helps a lot. So I'm constantly That's eating true. new things. I'm cooking. The cost benefit analysis of HelloFresh is an absolute no brainer. As is <laughs> free life. appetizers for cost life. If you go to HelloFresh.com and you use code Bellular Apps for yes, oh, Bellular free appetizer in each okay. box for life That's while your subscription is active. That is code Bellular Apps at HelloFresh.com for free appetizers for life. For life, damn. The myth, okay. the lie. Okay, the Titans and the Ordering of Azeroth. We all know about it. It's the origin myth of Warcraft. A race of benevolent gods came across our planet. They found it, this old god infested wreck. So what do they do? Well, they clean it up. But sadly, they can't kill the old gods. It does too much damage. They're in too deep. So right. they imprison them underground. Then the Titans just left to find the next planet to order. Azeroth was just another planet there was something powerful at work. Her blood was arcane. We noticed the likes of the Well of Eternity in the Lord. That was arcane. The ley lines underneath places like Karazhan. Azeroth was brimming with arcane. Right. And, and that's, why, that's why all the arcane makes you think that she was in fact a titan. World of Warcraft That's what the Titans on. are we made We started of. to do things the Titans kind of couldn't, like Ankaraj defeating Cthulhu. Then in Northrend, we found Titan complexes boring through our planet like Swiss cheese. In Ulduar, we downed another old god, this time Yog saron And when we did, he called Azeroth a miserable little seedling. A <laughs> seedling? Hmm. So the idea that she would maybe grow into something was very much pressed onto us even back when we fought Yogg Saroth. Right. But of course, you and I know that Ulduar goes deeper because we find Algulon the Observer. He's ready to wipe Azeroth clean of all life because he considers it corrupted. And he'd already done it to countless worlds and civilizations. We just felt tiny compared to what was out there. Azeroth felt like a speck of dust, a big, big, wide, crazy fantasy. Right. But then we started to wonder, well, is Azeroth special? What's going on? I mean, the old god Endgame, as far as we knew back in the day, was to corrupt Azeroth into Probably some... Probably the, 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 the first hints ever that Azeroth was, in fact, special was actually the player characters, right? The fact that these mere mortals 
or these things that were, you know, were on Azeroth that actually had been corrupted by the old gods, curse of flesh, all that shit, were able to, to defeat these old gods, right? One after another, as he said, he, that we did what the Titans could not do. And that probably was the first inkling that Azeroth was different, Azeroth was special, because the beings, the, the, the denizens of Azeroth were able to do things that other planets' denizens could not. And that's probably what caught the eye of the, uh, of the Titans once again, to look back and say, oh shit, what's up with this planet? sort of void creature that we didn't really understand. But still, there was power there that could be corrupted. What was actually going on? This is the kind of question that bubbled up in people's heads around the time of the Cataclysm. And that of course makes sense. Before Deathwing broke out, there was elemental upheaval. And to try and work out what was going on, Magni struck in the idea of talking to the planet. And of course, as you will have learned in our video yeah. on Magni, his plan technically worked, but he was a static diamond, so we had no idea. Right. Then, in Twilight of the Aspects, Thrall takes on the position of Earth Warder, and when he does, he sees Magni's spirit in the deep places, and he sees it talking to something, to someone. And he didn't know it, because it was in a book. But yes, during Cataclysm, long before they confirmed that this Azeroth is actually had a personality, it was heavily implied that someone, not something, lived at the heart of the world as Thrall saw Magni speaking with it. Er yeah, Thrall, uh, see, Magni was speaking to what we now know as Azeroth, but this whole thing's kind of been thrown amiss because now in the, in the pre-patch for, uh, for the War Within and everything else that's been kind of coming out here, we see now that Magni can no longer talk to Azeroth, but everybody else can. He no longer hears the whispers and it's pissing him off. But that makes you think, why would everyone now hear her, but he can't? Maybe he wasn't talking to her all along. Maybe he was talking to something something else, someone else. Could have been, could be Zalatath. But there's some interesting, you know, new shit being, that's been coming out here that's like, what, what is going on with Magni? Also, he's very pissed off that he's made a diamond snout, too. <laughs> that's Everything, though, thing. locked into place in Mists of Pandaria, when Rathian consumed the heart of Lei Shen. The Thunder King had once done the same, consuming the heart of Raden, a Titan Keeper who actually housed within him a fraction of Amunthul's soul. And when Rathian did that, Amunthul spoke through him, and we heard, We have fallen, we must rebuild the final Titan. The final Titan. That was the confirmation, right? Uh, that something, yeah. maybe Azeroth was the Thought final Azeroth Titan. Thought Azeroth was the final Titan. And multiple expansions later at the climax of the Antorus... Honestly, I'm betting at that time Azeroth was supposed to be the final titan. And then Blizzard changed it. Right. Probably Amethyl himself told us, Return home, children of Azeroth, protect the final titan. And as per that era of the lore, one day Azeroth would wake up and join the titan pantheon, bringing about ultimate order to the universe. He was seeing gear in our... Right that, now, that the most important point is that the final expansion of the World Soul Saga is called The Last Titan. What the hell does that mean? For Amunthul, Azeroth is still a titan in waiting, but what's now clear is that World Souls aren't just titans. The last three expansions have been telling us that without exactly just... See, it could have been Nazoth too. DK Myth saying maybe he was hearing Nazoth. That could be a thing because we also see that cinematic, if you guys remember, with, um, uh, what's her name, Azara, right? And Azara is holding back the water and everything, and we hear a voice whispering to her, and actually the voice sounds like a female, right? She's looking at that fish, and uh, she's trying to hold back the water and everything. If you guys are, let me bring that up, hold on. Azara, uh, cinematic. There's that exact moment where obviously the fish represents Nazath, right? That's what it's supposed to be, but it's a female's voice. So maybe Nazath is capable of, of doing that, right? Of hold, oh, Here it is, hold on, hold on. Yeah, right here, right here. So remember this. Look at this scene. And listen to what is probably Nazoth's voice. At least that's what we thought. We've seen this fish represent Nazoth before. it is i mean that's clearly a female voice right that that sounds like what we hear maybe could have been azeroth but we all thought it was nazoth at the time 
that voice is hers. You, it could have. It could also be her, <laughs> the noises. Yeah, it could also be her own voice. That's possible too. She could be having an internal conversation with herself. That could totally be it. Or it could be Nazath sounding, you know, like a female. Or he's talking through her as a female. Who knows? But uh, where are I putting that fish? My God. <laughs> yeah, I know. The voices do sound interesting for sure. But I would say that um, it could be Nazath. He could be capable of changing how his voice sounds. And yes, the Diamond King has been made upon. We all know that little line from Nazath as well. Going out right and saying it. So let me walk you through the whole thing. Magni woke during Legion. He brought Khadgar and Bran Bronzebeard to Ulduar and told them that Azeroth was a Titan world soul. And I can't show you guys anything, man. Back then, we were all, of course, Team Titan, and we had no real reason to question it, other than, of course, probably being a little bit worried that their, uh, their henchman, Algalon, was fairly ready to just wipe us off the face of the planet a few years ago. But still, some seeds of doubt were sown around that time. We get our hands on the jeweled scepter of Sargaris, and its artifact lore tells us that Sargaris once projected his soul to the heart of Azeroth, and when he did, he found a being. It opened a single eye, and he became obsessed with what he saw. It was a look into why Sargaris wanted our planet. He realized how important she was, but right. it would still take some time. Of the Titans, Sargaris was really the first one who discovered Azeroth's potential, most definitely. He might have discovered it before the old gods. We freed a bunch of the titans from the clutches of the Shivara who were torturing them. We ended up discovering that they had been defeated by Sargaris over a planet called Nihilim. But before that final battle, Amonthul, their leader, had pleaded with Sargaris, telling him that they had found something that would actually solve all of their problems. Because, of course, at the time, the Titans were really worried about all this Void stuff and all these spooky demons. Sargaris right. was worried about the Void and the spooky demons as well. The problem is, basically, Sargaris got um, really doomer about it and uh, somewhat overcorrected. His plan was not, we gotta wipe everything out, that's the only way. A bit like how in Halo, the only way to stop the Flood, some say, is to just destroy all <coughs> sentient life. But, of course, for the right. Titans... Well, they had found Azeroth. They thought that she could be the key. Thing is, though, Sargaris just plainly was not convinced at the time. He hadn't had that experience that I just referenced earlier, where he basically looked into Azeroth and Azeroth looked back. So because of that, he, uh, well, yeah, he just killed all the Titans and started the Burning Crusade. Now, when he there did, is. one of them, Norganon, who was one of the big brains of the Titans, he basically had a little backup plan that kept, saved a sliver of their souls, and those slivers just wandered their way to the Keepers on Azeroth. And that is why Amon Thul had a little bit of his soul in Raden, which is why when Rathian consumed the heart of Leishan, who had in Makes turn sense. consumed the heart of Raden, all of that Amon Thul juice ended up in Rathian. The point, though, here is that Amon Thul and Sargaris, both leaders of their kind and beings of the same kind, they both realized something about Azeroth that we didn't at the time. Now, the other big reveal was Argus, this guy, another world soul, but one who was pumped full of fell magic and basically right. used as a big battery to allow Legion forces to regenerate faster. Now, we actually get a first-person view of what it's like to be a world soul like Argus in an audiobook Blizzard released called A Thousand Years of War. Very good in audiobook. It, through just massive geological time, Argus would blink, and each time he would look out onto his planet, and thousands of years had passed, life had flourished, but then the Legion came and began juicing him full of fell energy, creating slowly more foul aspect of world soul but the thing is the guys doing that the dread lords as a part of the jailers 4d chess were also pumping argus full of death magic making his world soul actually right. aspected to death so that when we killed argus his soul went to now i don't know if it's confirmed whether or not he was already the aspect of death or whether all this death magic turned him into that but uh, one one had to come up before the other me i'd like to think that he probably was attached to death already and that was why Argus was selected to begin with, was its kind of relation to death and how it could open it open up kind of a gate for the Jailer and all this bullshit lore uh, back, you know, to the death realm. Not the realm where a titan would go, but to the realm of death. 
and the rules are basically kill a being heavily aspected to a fundamental energy of the universe and their soul will be blasted back to where that energy came from that's why when you kill a demon in the warcraft universe it goes yeah. back to the nether when you kill right. an old god its essence goes back to the void and when argus was killed because he was full of that death magic instead of going to where he maybe should have he went to the shadowlands of course Went right. to the Shadowlands, straight to the Arbiter, which was not able to deal with him. And that's why the Arbiter was screwed. Yeah, but I've got amazing right. news. You see all that Shadowlands stuff? The only bit that's relevant going forward is that you can jam a world soul full of magic like death and fundamentally change it. None of that Thank Shadowlands God. stuff is... is, is the rest doesn't matter. Going forward, we hope. Okay, let's get back to things. So... Azeroth. Sargaris was chained, of course, the end of Legion, and zipped off with the Titans, but Azeroth was wounded from the sword, and Magni got us to the Chamber of the Heart. Right. This era was peak Titan lore. We were foot soldiers going out, putting down the final old god, and doing it for a big robot called Mother. But Nazoth, of course, knew what was going on. He's a smart cookie. He did he not get killed. He his champions. He gave yeah. us the gift of Nazoth. He gave us visions and all of that. And this is where the whole story unravels. And funnily enough, it unravels with the Torin. <clears throat> you see, here's the thing with the Torin. We were never really fooled by all that. By the way, don't forget, Nazoth already knew that we were coming to kill him, and he already knew he was going to lose. Which is why we're all convinced that he had a backup plan and that he's not actually dead. And the reason why he knew is because we go back in time early in Dragonflight, and he looks into our minds, and he sees. He, you know, he says, I know you, who, who you are, what you will become, all that stuff. He, uh, he sees his own death through our minds. So then he can go back and, you know, fix it. Have a backup plan. That's why Nazoth is still alive. Definitely. Titan stuff. They consider themselves to be the he first wouldn't just let himself die, children of knowing what was going to happen. world of what they call the Earth Mother. Their origin myth, as told in Isaac the Earth Mother, is eerily similar to what we know happened in Azeroth's past. Essentially, that the old gods came and Azeroth slept. But... This story was much older than Titans, and it talked about Azeroth's eyes as great engines of creation, where, of course, Elun and Anshe created to the Shu Hello, which is the sort of ancestral oh, there's the sort blue of moon. first Torin name. Of course, if you were to read the allegory of this cultural story deeper, then Azeroth is a much older being, maybe Probably one normal, more clear, and mythic Titan, keys, more hey. primal, fundamental. Again. Think about Argus blinking and the ages of the world passing, or Sargaris beholding or a single walking. eye at the center of our world. The eye of the world soul is its focus of, of creation, and nothing we've ever heard about the Titans sounds the same. And that is when Blizzard started yeah. telling us that Azeroth was different without telling us straight up. Right. We weren't even on the planet, of course. We were off in the Shadowlands, where odd things were going on. We saw this bunch called uh, the Eternal Ones, the Pantheon of Death. They were, for some reason, held up alongside the Titans in terms of power. Uh, at the center of the Shadowlands, though, is this yeah. strange thing called Zareth Mortis. Yeah, none and, of this makes uh, sense. Really, we could only really understand it. It, it does and it doesn't. I just feel like a lot of this lore was kind of tacked onto old lore. They tried to uh, synergize it all, and it's just kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, first ones, and yeah, the Pantheon of Death kind of being held up, held up to the same power level as the Titans. Through, a, through the dense writings They're like death of a titans. broker called Farin. He understood Zareth Mortis as one of six locus points in the cosmos, around which the cosmic powers exist. So there was a Zareth Vitae of life, a Zareth Umbra of void, and so on and so on. And right at the center of that whole mess was something else. Something fundamental, something that gave rise to everything else. What was that thing? Well, here's a little bit of the Jailer's plan. So, Arthas, he built the Forge of Souls. Right. And it was an energy pump connected to our world soul. When Zoval unlocked the Sepulcher of the First Ones, he opened a path to that big old mess of cosmic connections and weird things that Farim was talking about. This whole web okay. of six with one in the No, Shadowlands lore is not deleted. It's still, it's still relevant, but uh, we were just saying, he was just trying to say that, okay, most of it, just throw it out. This is the part of it that you need to think about. Woo. Anyway, Zoval then fired off the Forge of Souls, and it connected his domination magic to our world soul. It then shot that domination energy to the heart of all of these six cosmic forces, the different Zareth installations. And basically his plan was to spread the domination magic throughout the whole system, so he owned it. But uh, instead, well, we defeated him, which is good. Right. Now, 
What was the key to that connection? That was a great Now look, weapon. I get it. Friends don't tell friends about Shadowlands lore. But the point here is, <laughs> the big bit in the middle that connected all True. of these things, the thing that, uh, that the Jailer had to, like, pipe directly into was Azeroth's world soul. Is she the central point that Fareem mentioned? It's kind of hard to say. But this lore, right, it did damage to people's faith in Blizzard's world building. I think they had neat ideas, but they were introduced in a damaging way. And that meant that the job of WoW's next expansion was to get some of those same ideas across, but in a way that felt grounded in, you know, the setting that we actually like. At the beginning of Dragonflight, we were told that the world was waking up, right? right. We had all of that shimmery blue stuff in the cinematic. Yeah. We even went to a place called the Waking Shores. When you think about the expansion, though, much of its point was who gets to be in charge? These powerful beings who represent the Titans, the dragon aspects, or these powerful beings who claim to represent the world itself, the primal incarnates, right? Yeah, true. That was the whole point. The Primalists saw themselves as the true inheritors of Azeroth, right? They they had their version of the mandate the of The uncorrupted heaven, versions. Know? And, of course, to them, the Titans were foreign invaders who had to be cast out. Then, of course, we spent the rest of the expansion proving that right. Uh, it's not saying the Incarnates were good guys. They did a lot of bad things, but they right. had a few points. Take a look at the Halls of Infusion infusing the Order magic into the Dragon Eggs. That's a process that very literally is wrote large through all of the Titan machines in Azeroth yeah. that are pumping her full of Order magic. Of course, Basically corrupting or, you know, Titan corrupting all the Dragon Eggs before they even hatch. So all the dragons basically end up looking like the Aspects with the same powers and everything and all that stuff. And yes, the original dragons, the proto drakes, and all of them, the incarnates, they saw that as you know messed up. You didn't even give these guys a choice. You're just turning them into titan dragons. That was the whole story of Dragonflight. Of course, and now they're all friends. And you know we got uh, um, what's her Viranoth is now one of the aspects. So now we have both sides on the you know the, the uh, and they're all getting their powers from Azeroth now, right? They lost their powers. They got them back from the World Tree. All that stuff. Straza realizes there you go. that Dragon the price of ordering Azeroth was sometimes too high. That whenever she the said, were you know there. what, yeah, they dear, were. I think you should take our eggs. I'm going to let you just take our eggs and, you know, put some stuff in the water and uh, change how they'll turn out. And if moving images of an angry man saying they're putting frickin' chemicals in the water to turn the frickin' frogs gay, if that's appearing in your mind, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's line. pretty much what was going on. So Alex Strazer realizes maybe she shouldn't have let them do that. Chromie, of course, learns that the whole one true timeline thing, that in a way that only served the Titan's vision, forcing her to sacrifice what she loved. And of course, with the Incarnates, well, one of them is now ruling along with the dragons as the yep. aspect of storms. And of course, while Varanoth completely disavows all of that uh, nasty business that the other ones were up to, she ultimately does actually believe what she believes and now she's been welcomed into the fold. Of course, at the climax of Emirdrasil, the dragons, having failed to renew their oath to the Titans, well, they found that they had actually uh, owed their oath to someone else, and they were empowered not by the Titans, but by the World Soul. That's actually, I think, a whole point of this expansion. It's just the, the cinematic was honestly a little bit cringe, so uh, people yeah. didn't take it seriously. <laughs> But straight up, the point is, back in the day, they were so powerful because uh, the Titans gave... I mean, c compare that set of addicts when we killed the Lich King and the badassness of all of that. You know, when there must always be a Lich King in the big moment and the sitting on the, the putting out of the helm. And then compare it to this, where, you know, we get a bunch of sparkly eyes and now, oh, I got, I got my powers back. You know, a moment like that. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, wow today. Give them that power. <laughs> Um, when they went to do all the oath stuff, that's all I can stuff, say about that. Which, let's be real. What does an oath stone do? Who knows? But they we don't, don't know. work. And now they're powerful beings again. But their power has came from the world itself, and that very, very much uh, is an important part of the story as we move forward. Like, think about it. Outside of the Titan Keepers themselves, people like Odin, the aspects were the face of the Titans' ordering of Azeroth. Right now, right they kind of work for the world soul. They work for the planet <laughs> itself. They were empowered no by problem, it. No problem, Spam. Meanwhile, we had lore books popping up, painting Odin as the Titan's police in Azeroth. He handed a sanitized version of Azeroth's yeah, Odin's history a bitch. down to the mortal races, uh, literally writing the Titans and the ordering of Azeroth, like that book, you know, written 
from their perspective. We're, we're going to end up fighting Odin because he is a servant, uh, you know, who just d- does the Titans bidding. He's like the hammer of the Titans, and he's willing to kill us if he has to. So we're going to have to deal with him at some and, point. And the whole story at the beginning of this video, that's sort of Odin stuff. And it's basically because of him that we believe the Titans were the most powerful beings in creation and that ordering Azeroth was their natural right. But of course... It doesn't seem that she's a Titan world soul, at least not yet. Because right. if there was one meta point out of Dragonflight, it was that the world soul is more important than the Titans, and now we are defending it, not Amon Thul's plan for it, which is what yeah. we had been defending in the past. Right, right. And that brings us to defining Azeroth. Azeroth is a world soul, whatever those are. She is very big and powerful, we think, because of Farina's She's a special writing. world soul. Or perhaps like Argus, eh, you can just pump a world soul full of whatever cosmic flavor you want, and they'll pop out as a god of that type. Or it could be both. Mm-hmm. But what is clear beyond anything is why one figure won't like any of this, and why one figure is going to be the headline antagonist, I think, of the whole world soul saga, and how that one pissed off figure is Amethyl. Yeah. No doubt we meet him in three expansions time. Yep. Till then, though, you should watch this video. I think this video. is right. It's diving into Magni's accidental diamondification, the stuff that happened to him, the rough spot that he finds himself in now. Amethul and will be the last Titan, and we'll fight him in, this video in the last Titan. Interesting. I think you'll enjoy what's over there. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks to today's sponsor. If you want to help us out, you can check them out. With that said, I'll see you next time. Yeah, that, that seems like the most likely theory, is that the last Titan kind of refers to the, our final battle. And not that there will be one more Titan left, but that Amonthu will be the last Titan standing. You know, I, maybe Sargeras doesn't consider himself to be a Titan anymore. And we fight Amonthu and we defeat him. And there you go. That's the last, the end of the Titan line, essentially. Yeah, that's probably what happens.